students we are discussing about uh, application of nonlinear programming in the previous class we have discussed about uh, various examples in this class also i am going to take an another example uh, forecasting of a new product that is an example so how to use nonlinear programming to forecast the adoption pattern of a new product the agenda for this lecture is forecasting adoption of a new product this forecasting technique is called the uh, boss forecasting model this problem i have taken from this book anderson et al now we'll discuss about the forecasting adoption of a new product so forecasting new adoptions after a product introduction is an important marketing problem in this lecture we can study a forecasting model developed by frank boss that has proven to be particularly effective in forecasting the adoption of innovative and new technologies in the marketplace nonlinear programming is used to estimate the parameters of the boss forecasting model so what we are going to do this professor F uh, frank boss has uh, given a forecasting model that is used for forecasting adoption of a new product so what we are going to do we are going to uh, estimate the parameters of this frank forecasting model so once we are able to estimate the parameters we can estimate the forecasting of a, a new product which you are planning to forecast this model has three parameters so that is a three parameters of boss forecasting model that is what we are going to estimate here at the time of estimating we are going to use the concept of nonlinear programming so this model has three parameters that must be estimated what are the three parameter one is m m is the number of people estimated to eventually adopt to the new product so at the end how many people are going to adopt this new product a company introducing a new product is obviously interested in the value of this parameter they should know how many people are going to adopt this new product the next parameter is q that is called coefficient of imitation so this parameter that is the coefficient of imitation measures the likelihood of adoption due to potential adopter being influenced by someone who has already adopted the product it is the coefficient of imitation so this parameter says uh, how many people are buying the product who were influenced by others who has already purchased this it measures the word of mouth it measures the word of mouth and social media effect influencing purchases so i buy the product i go and write in the review so other people may read my review then they may be interested they, they also will buy that is called the coefficient of imitation then the third parameter is coefficient of innovation this parameter measures the likelihood of adoption assuming no influence from someone who has already purchased or adopted the product it is the likelihood of someone adopting the product due to her his own interest in the innovation so these are the three parameters in the boss forecasting model using these parameters let us now develop the forecasting model let c t minus 1 here t represents the current period t minus 1 is the previous period that is c t1 denote the number of people who have adopted the product through time t minus 1 because m is the number of people estimated to eventually adopt the product so m minus c t minus 1 is the number of potential adopters remaining at time t minus 1 so m is similar to our uh, population okay so ct minus 1 is number of people who have adopted 
So, the remaining people are m minus c t minus 1. We refer to the time interval between time t minus 1 and the time t as a time period. So, it is like this. So, this is t. So, this is t minus 1. So, during this interval how many people are adopted the product that is the interval t. During the period t some percentage of the remaining number of potential adopters that is m minus c t minus 1 will adopt the product. So, this value depends upon the likelihood of a new adoption. So, m minus c t minus 1 this value is depending upon the likelihood of a new adoption. The likelihood of a new adoption is the likelihood of adoption due to the imitation plus the likelihood of adoption due to innovation. So, there are two possibility someone will adopt the product one is due to the imitation or due to innovation. The likelihood of adoption due to imitation is a function of the number of people that have already adopted the product. Obviously, the q represents there is a likelihood of adoption due to imitation is the function of number of people that have already adopted the product. The larger the current pool of adopters, the greater their influence through word of mouth and social media. Because the c t minus 1 divided by m, this term is the fraction of the number of people estimated to adopt the product by time t minus 1. The likelihood of adoption due to imitation is computed by multiplying this fraction by q the coefficient of imitation. Thus, the likelihood of adoption due to imitation is there are two terms there. One is this much people and this term is multiplied by this q. This q is nothing but your coefficient of imitation. You see that this is proportional to this c t minus 1 divided by m. Okay. If this it is similar to probability. So, that probability is multiplied by this term q. Okay. If there are more proportions there will be a the, the, the product will be more. So, the likelihood of adoption due to imitation is q multiplied by c t minus 1 divided by m. So, this q we will estimate it. The likelihood of adoption due to innovation is simply p the coefficient of innovation. Thus, the likelihood of adoption is p. What is the p coefficient of innovation plus this coefficient of imitation multiplied by c t minus 1 upon m. So, this will be the overall likelihood of adoption. So, p plus q c t minus 1 upon m. Now, we will go for forecasting of the remaining number of potential customers. Using the likelihood of adoption, we can develop a forecast of the remaining number of potential customers that will adopt the product during time period t. F t, the forecast of the number of new adopters during time t is how we are doing F t equal to p plus q c t minus 1 upon m multiplied by m minus c t minus 1. So, this was the total adopters. Okay. This was the remaining people who have not adopted. So, when you multiply that we can see how many people are going to adopt the, the product. This, uh, this model this f t equal to p plus q c t minus 1 upon m multiplied by m c c t minus 1. This equation was given intuitively. The this same Bass forecasting model given the equation can be rigorously derived from statistical principles. But we have brought this formula in a in a intuitive manner. Okay. So, what we have done rather than providing such a derivation, we have emphasized the intuitive aspect of the model. Okay. So, you can intuitively okay, 
you can get convinced by looking at this model F t. In developing a forecast of a new adoptions in period t using the BOSS model, the value of C t minus 1 will be known from the past sales data. What is C t minus 1? People who have already adopted the product. But we also need to know the values of parameters to use in this model. What are they? M, P and Q. Now, let us now see the how nonlinear programming is used to estimate the parameter values of M, P and Q. Now, I am going to explain some examples. Okay. Uh, with the help of that example, we are going to estimate the parameters. Now, this figure which is in the right hand side shows the graph of box office revenue in million dollar of two different films, an independent studio film and a summer blockbuster action movie over the first 12 weeks after release. Strictly speaking, box office revenue for time period T are not the same as the number of adopters during the time period T. But the number of repeat customer is usually small and the box office revenue are a multiple of number of movie goers. So, the BAS forecasting model seems appropriate here. So, what we are going to see now? We are going to estimate how many people are going to watch the movies. There are two kind of pattern. So, the product one for example, see the independent studio films. You see the y axis is the revenues. Initially, the revenue is increasing, it goes top again it is decreasing. Okay. But you see the other movie that is a summer blockbuster. Initially, the revenue is very high, more number of people are watching. Then when the time increases, week increases, the, the revenue is decreasing because all the population might have watched. Okay. Here, the word of mouth here the word of mouth is play important role. So, somebody goes to watch a movie then he says that this movie is good. So, he somebody the other people also coming and watching. So, that the, the revenue goes peak. These two films illustrate drastically different adoption patterns. Note that revenue from independent studio film here grow until they peak in the week 4. See up to week 4 the revenue is more and then they decline. So, for this film, for this film much of the revenue is obviously due to word of mouth and social media influences. That is why initially the revenue is less then it goes top then again it is coming back. In terms of uh, boss model, the imitation factor dominates the innovation factor. So, we expect the Q is greater than P that is why we are getting this kind of pattern. However, for the summer blockbuster revenue peak in week 1 and drop sharply afterward. The innovation factor dominates the imitation factor and we expect Q is less than P. So, in these two figures what we understand the top one where the imitation factor is more, imitation factor is dominating, the word of mouth is dominating. The second one where the innovation factor is dominating. Our job is to estimate the value of P and Q. Now, we will go for BOSS forecasting model. The forecasting model given in the equation can be incorporated into a nonlinear optimization problem to find the value of P, Q and M that give the best forecast for a set of data, where the P is the innovation factor, Q is the imitation factor, M is we can say the, pop, the number of people eventually who are going to adopt the product. Assume that the n periods of data are available. So, let S t denote the actual number of adopters or a multiple of that number such as sales in period t for t equal to 1 to n. 
then the forecast in each period and the corresponding forecast error E t are defined by first we will see forecast model forecast is p plus q c t minus 1 upon m m minus c t minus 1. The next term is the error term. So, what is this error term? In forecasting when we say error is actual minus predicted. this is your error. You can write predicted minus actual also because we are going to square this error it would not affect us. Here we first we have taken predicted minus actual. Here what we are going to do for the forecasting model we are uh, using the concept of minimizing the sum of error squared. Notice that the forecast error is the difference between forecast value ft and the actual value st. It is a common statistical practice to estimate parameters by minimizing the sum of error square. In the regression context we will say SSE minimizing error sum of square. If it is smaller then we can say this model is more accurate. Let us see the complete uh, forecasting model where there is objective function there is a constraint. The, here the objective function is minimizing the sum of the square of the error. Here what is constraint f t equal to our forecasting model f t equal to p plus q c t minus 1 upon m m minus c t minus 1. Here the error term is predicted value minus actual value. Because this equation 1 and 2 both contain nonlinear term this 1 and 2 this model is a nonlinear minimization problems. What we are minimizing here? We are going to minimize the sum of the square of the error. But you should remember here the decision variable is p q and m. Now, I have taken an example this example also taken from this book Anderson et al. Revenue and cumulative revenues for the independent studio film in weeks 1 to 12. We have seen the pattern what was the adoption pattern there it is like this. So, what we have to do using these data the nonlinear model to estimate the parameters of the BOSS forecasting model will be discussed. What data is given? Weekly sales is given 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, 12 weeks is there and its sales is given. Then we have found the cumulative sales 0.1, 3.1, 3.1 plus 5.2, 8.3 up to 12 weeks. Now, I will discuss about the formulation of BAS forecasting model. There is a 12 weeks, so there will be error term for 12 weeks E1 square plus E2 square up to E12 square. For the week 1, the F1 equal to P into M. What is the P? It is innovation factor, okay. there would not be any Q, there would not be any imitation factor because that person is coming coming to watch the movie not by listening to somebody's reviews he himself comes so th there won't be any q only there will be a p is the innovation factor will be there so f2 will be what is f2 p plus q ct minus 1 what is this ct minus 1 this ct minus 1 is nothing but this cumulative value 0 0.10 upon m then m minus ct minus 1. Then f3 p plus q what is this cumulative value 3.10. So, it is 3.10 upon m. So, m minus 3.10 like that I have written for all 12 weeks in same way I have written the error term for all 12 weeks. 
Here the objective function is we have to minimize the sum of the square of the error. For error for week 1 is F1 minus actual data is 0.1, actual sales. The week 2 error is F2 minus 3. For week 12, F12 minus 0.6. This model I am going to solve with the help of solver. Now, I am going to solve this problem, nonlinear problem with the help of solver. So, I have written C2, right, where the value of m. This was my final answer, but I will show you how I got this answer. Then uh, D2, the value of q, then C2, the value of p, that is coefficient of innovation. Okay. Now, how I am forecasting? See, C, uh, suppose if we go E9, E9, E9 is E2 multiplied by C2. Look at the uh, equation which I have written because F1 equal to P into M. Then F2, the column which is down, P plus Q multiplied by 0 0.10. 0 0.10 is where the D9 is there upon M. M is my C2 multiplied by M minus 0 0.10. M is C2 minus D9. Like that I have written for all 12 weeks. Then what is the error? You go to F9, F9 is the predicted value minus actual value that is C9. What is the C9? C9 is the actual value minus predicted value is E9. Similarly, for uh, say F10, when you go for F2, uh, F10, it is C10 minus E10. So, what I have done in the G column, I have squared the error. Okay. I have added all the squares. So, that is our G21. G21 is I have added this uh, squared value. So, now when I go to data and solver, you see this is a minimization problem. My objective function is G22, sum of the square of the error that has to be minimized. Very important point you should remember here the changing cell is our value of m, p and q and the c2 is greater than or equal to 0. So, when I solve in using CRG nonlinear, I got this result. So, the result is you can go back, the result is the value of m, go up, the value of m is 34, q is 0 0.49 and p is 0 0.07. Here m I did not put any upper limit, total number of people who are going to adopt eventually who are going to adopt it. If you want you can put the approximate population size that will be more accurate answer. So, now I have uh, taken the screenshot of this answer into the my presentation. So, the value of m is 34 and the value of uh, p and q are given. One point you should remember, this model is neither convex, neither concave. So, every time you may get different result. So, that means that the you may not get the same answer because we are getting local optima solution that is local minimum solution, it is not the global minimum solution. When I forecasted, when I compared the error, you see that there is a similar pattern. So, this, uh, this is the forecast value the blue one says the actual value. You see that the red one is the forecasted value. There is a similar pattern between the actual value and forecasted value. Now, there is another problem, another example that is forecasting or finding the value of M, P and Q for summer blockbuster. So, this data is given, weekly sales data. It is similar to the same data set. So, this data set is given, but here the adopter, uh, adoption pattern is different. You see that here the adoption pattern is like this. Previously, the adoption pattern was like this. So, for this type of model also, we can find out value of M, P and Q. So, when I run this model, this also I am going to solve with the help of solver. Now, this is a Excel model for summer blockbuster movie. So, what has happened? It is exactly the same thing, only the, the pattern of the data is different. 
of the weekly sales. You see initially it is 72, then it is keep on decreasing. All other models are same. For example, forecast E9, see the F2, E2 minus C2. The same thing what you have done previously. Here also we are finding the error, then we are squaring the error and summing the error. So, when I go to data, when I click on solver, you see the requirement. Here I am minimizing the sum of the square of the error. So, I want to get the changing cell is M P Q. Here I am keeping a, a cutoff. Okay. So, the value of M is between 1000 to 100 okay. because, because these are others are probability. So, I kept less than or equal to 1. Okay. So, when I solve it, I got the value of M is 149, value of Q is 0 0.01 and value of M is uh, P is 0 0.48. So, why I have solved it? I am going to compare the previous model versus this model. So, what has happened? Now, you see the pattern. The comparison of BAS forecasting model between independent studio film and summer blockbuster. You see that the independent studio film, the value of P is smaller. What is the P? The innovation factor is smaller, but for a summer blockbuster innovation factor is high. That is why the pattern was like this. Here the pattern was like this. You see the Q for independent studio film, the Q the imitation factor is more, but for summer blockbuster the imitation factor is less and the M we can put it, this M we can predict, this is up to, this will change based on the our population size. This is a very famous model, the reference for this model is Frank M. Boss at all, see uh, direct TV forecasting diffusion of new technology prior to product launch, this paper is published in interfaces. So, the, the, the mathematics behind this model is has come from this research paper. The solution to this nonlinear program and the solution to a similar nonlinear program for the summer blockbuster are given in the previous table. We have seen the comparison. The optimal forecasting parameter value given in the table are intuitively appealing and consistent with the figure. For the independent studio film which is in the this one the top which has the largest revenue in week 4 and the value of imitation parameter is 0 0.490. This value is substantially larger than the innovation parameter P, the value of P is only 0 0.074. So, what we understand the film picks up momentum over time due to favorable word of mouth. After 4 week rev after 4 weeks the revenue decline as more and more of the potential market for the film has already seen it. Contrast these data with those of summer blockbuster which has negative value that is minus 0 0.018 for the imitation parameter and the innovation parameter is 0 0.494. So, that means for the summer blockbuster movie the innovation parameter is high, but the imitation factor is very less. So, what we understand the greatest number of adoptions are in week 1 and new adoptions decline afterward. Obviously, the word of mouth and social media influences were not favorable where were summer blockbuster. Initially, there are more number of viewers after that it is keep on declining. In figure we see the forecast value based on the parameters in table and the observed values in the same graph. So, what we understand the forecast values are already uh, denoted by this square. The BAS forecasting model does a good job of tracking revenue for independent studio film. You see that this is the, the revenue pattern is very nice. This pattern we have seen in our excel also. For summer blockbuster, the BAS model does an outstanding job. It is virtually impossible to distinguish the forecast line from the actual adoption line. You see that here the both are completely overlapping this BAS forecasting model. So, the important point you should remember is what good a forecast model is if we must wait until after the adoption cycle is complete to estimate the parameters. You may ask this question, 
how we can get these parameters m p q right until the adoption cycle is complete. So, one way to use this BAS forecasting model for a new product is to assume that the sales of the new product will behave in a way that is similar to previous product for which the p and q have been calculated and to subjectively estimate m the potential market for the new product. For example, one might assume that the box office receipts for movies next summer will behave similar to box office receipts for movies in the last summer. So, the value of m p q can be compared with the our previous models or the product which are having the similar nature. Then the p and q used for the next summer's movies would be the p q values calculated from the actual box office receipt last summer. Forecasting adoption of satellite television describes how this approach was used to forecast sales of satellite TV using P and Q values from the adoption of history of cable television. So, what I am trying to say here is from the adoption pattern of cable TV they got value of P and Q. With the help of this P and Q they have estimated the adoption pattern of satellite television. Okay. So, the value of P and Q was estimated from an activity which is similar to what we are forecasting currently now. The second approach is to wait until several periods of data for the new product are available. For example, if 5 periods of data were available, the sale of data for these 5 periods could be used to forecast demand for period 6. Then after 6 period of sales are observed, the forecast for period 7 is made. So, this method is often called rolling horizon approach. So, what we are understanding from this? The value of P and Q innovation factor and imitation factor are estimated from the previous product which has similar adoption factors. For example, what has done? So, from the cable TV adoption pattern, we got the value of P and Q. So, this P and Q can be used for uh, forecasting the adoption pattern of satellite TV. In this lecture, I have explained another application of nonlinear programming that is the application was forecasting adoption pattern of a new product. So, in this forecasting model, we have estimated two parameters that is the value of p and q. p is coefficient of innovation, q is coefficient of imitation. After estimating this p and q, these parameters can be used for forecasting a similar product which has the similar adoption pattern. The next class I will explain another example of or another application of nonlinear programming. Thank you very much.